Our study is on Martha. Now, she's not much found in the Bible, but she is an interesting character to study. And in Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 38, now it came to pass as they went, Jesus and the disciples, that he entered into a certain village. And a certain woman. So it's not a parable. When it's a certain. And what it means is there's a certain village and it's Bethany. Or Bethpage. I forget which one. We'll see it in John. Bethany or Bethpage. Okay. And there's a certain woman named Martha. So we're going to look at a woman. And her name is Martha. And she is the subject of this story. Received him into her house. Now the Holy Spirit tells us through Luke that this house belongs to Martha. And in this house of Martha, there is her sister Mary and her brother Lazarus. That Martha, learning already by the Holy Spirit, is the caretaker of her family. She is the supplier of the doer, the worker, and the server of this house that we will see. And she had a sister called Mary. Now this is not Mary, the mother of Jesus. There are a few Marys in the Bible. Which also sat at Jesus' feet, Mary. And heard his word. So we're in the house. Mary is sitting in the room where Jesus is. She's at the feet of Jesus, listening to Jesus speak. Okay, that's a, can you imagine if we could today? No, we can't. If we had the opportunity to have Jesus sit in a room, and if we had the opportunity between two things that we're going to look at in this story, if you could sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to Jesus, that's where Mary is. Mary could tell us what the voice of Jesus sounded like. I can't. And how many of us would say, I would be at the feet of Jesus, listening to Jesus? Verse 40, but... Got to pay attention to the word but in the Bible. Because when we get to the word but, what follows is an important statement. But Martha was cumbered, concerned about much serving. Mary is at the feet of Jesus, listening to Jesus. And Martha is in the kitchen serving. Martha is not listening. She's serving. I have been in a couple churches where there have been a fellowship after the service. And I have seen where the women have left the service, left the message early, 
so they can partake in the kitchen and in the fellowship and the serving and the setting up. And they're not there to hear the message. That's a Martha church. When the pastor will allow his congregation to exit the congregation, to not hear the word of God, so they can go prepare the fellowship. They don't hear the end of the message. They're not there for the altar call. And like we're going to learn with Martha in a moment, she misses out on the most important thing. And friend, if this is your church and you allow people to get up before the service is over, to go tend to the to the to the to the wonderful great fellowship we're gonna have afterwards, you got a Martha church. The people should be like Mary listening. Back to verse 40. She came to him. She walks up to Jesus teaching. And she walks up to Jesus, interrupts Jesus, and said, Lord, she calls him Lord. Does thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Jesus, you're teaching. There's my sister. She's listening. I'm serving. Excuse me, Jesus. You want to tell her to get up her, off her butt and get in that kitchen and get in that dining room and start helping with the meal, start setting up the plates? Oh, well, that's what the pastor does when you got the church that lets the people leave early for the fellowship. That's what Christians do when they're not in church Sunday morning. I know this for a fact. They're not in church Sunday morning because there's a family outing. A family get-together. And the message is missed. Because of a meal. Is not God become their belly? You know, you can digest a, a, a meal when you're supposed to be digesting the word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Martha is missing the word that's coming out of the mouth of Jesus. There are Christians that miss The word of God. You ever been in the church service and a woman's open, trying to open one of those crinkly candies? Interrupts. Because they want to put something in their mouth. Listen, all of sin came because let's eat the fruit that God said not to eat. So she interrupts Jesus. Jesus, tell my sister get to work. You know, there's another case in the gospel where somebody came up to Jesus and said, Jesus, my brother and I have an inheritance, but I didn't get anything. Will you tell my brother to give me my inheritance? And Jesus is like, man, who made me a judge? Put away that fortune. Put away the money. That's of no value. And Jesus answered and said unto her. So here comes Jesus. Here's his answer. Martha. Martha. He says it twice. I get something. When Jesus, when God, when the Holy Spirit repeats something in the 66 books of the King James Bible, when Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, 
repeat something. Verily, verily. Or a story shows up more than twice. It's important. It says, Martha. Martha. Can you imagine that? There's a group. There are people there. Mary's there. Martha's, you know, holding a ladle. And she's upset. And he goes, Martha. Martha. Thou art careful. There's a word clumbered. Concerning. And troubled. About many things. Is the soup too hot? Do we have enough glasses? Is the silverware clean? Do we have enough plates? Are there napkins? Did you make the coffee? Now that's not a sin. If you're going to have a meal. But don't let your meal interrupt Jesus and his words. Because that's exactly what Martha did. She interrupted Jesus in his teaching and his explaining that Mary was sitting there listening. And Jesus acknowledged, Martha, you're a busy buddy for good. But not now. The time to be careful and troubled is after Jesus is done teaching. Then Mary would get up and help you. There's a time and a place for everything Solomon says. And if you got the wrong time in the wrong place, you are wrong, no matter what you do. If you're sitting there reading the newspaper, and you ought to be reading the Bible with your family. All right, yeah, newspaper is interesting. It's not the right time. Sleeping's good. But if you're sleeping in a business meeting at work, well, that's not good. But one thing is needful. So Jesus does not rebuke what Martha is doing. As, Martha, you're wrong. You're just wrong at the wrong time. There is a time to be careful and there is a time to be troubled. Maybe a work proposal. Maybe an event you're having in your family. Maybe your bills. Maybe you're doing your taxes. Whatever it is, there's a time. But there's one needful thing. But one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part. What's the good part? What was Mary doing? Mary sat Jesus' feet and heard his word. We are in a need of the word of God. Which is lacking in the Laodicean church age. I don't care what denomination or no denomination. It's lacking. And you surely don't have the word of God if you got a modern English Bible. You are lacking if it's not the King James 1611 Bible. You are lacking in a Bible study where, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Oh, what's your question? What's this have to do? And you are not teaching scripture by scripture
When you go to church and every church service, you hear a salvation message Sunday morning. You hear love, 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 love. That's not the word of God. Now, there is love in the Bible. There is a salvation message in the Bible. But if you get too much of a sugar diet, you're going to have diabetes. If you get too much of a soft diet, you're going to get high blood pressure. You're going to ruin your kidney. If you get too much of something, it, it's bad for you. Listen. Listen. Plums and prunes are good for you, but if you got too many, they say that chocolate is good for you to an extent, but if you have too much, Jesus said, okay, Martha, you're you're careful. You're troubled. Many things. She's got an anxiety problem. And the answer to the troubling, the answer to the carefulness, the trouble of, of anxiety is the word of God. To listen to the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. You're not going to get knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the word of God by a book written by a man. You can have your entire library filled with books by man. That ain't going to do you no good. It's going to be one book, the King James 1611 book, Bible. But, I mean, you can have other books. To help. Listen, I have commentaries to help me. But my main source of Bible studies that I bring to you each and every time is the King James 1611 Bible. Mary has chosen the good part. The good part is listening to the word, Jesus, which shall not be taken away from her. What happens to your meal? You, you go and you have your fellowship. You go, you have your meal. Can I just be frank? Your meal ends up in the toilet. It ends up in the sewage. It ends up in an in outhouse. And your body uses up all the vitamins and all that, and you need more. My eyes are failing. I'm getting older. My health is failing. And I got my old Bible here. I was at the Institute, Charity Bible Institute. And some I can't read. I got one of them magnifying glasses now. And I, I try to read, and I have a hard time reading sometimes my note. And I have a hard time. I'll be trying to read the Bible. My eyes go blurry. But you know what? I read the Bible to enough where the Holy Spirit says, okay, I can read the Bible when my eyes get cloudy. And I'll get to the point, you know what? I got to take off my glasses and I, and I got to sit there just, just let, my, let my eyes pass and get back to reading. I can hear a message on the radio. I can hear a message on the CD. I can hear a message out of the church. And I know if the man is quoting a non-King James Bible, I can recognize that. And I'll probably recognize that to the day I die. When I used to, again, like I said, my health has made me bad. But when I used to street preach and somebody come up to me, as soon as they start opening up their mouth, I know what they're going to say. I know where they're going with that. And the Holy Spirit has used me and the, and the scriptures to help to counterattack. I have never in my street ministries, I have never in my public ministries, I have never witnessing to anybody 
and threw them a fork or a spoon or a piece of bread. I've given them the word of God. And what we see with Martha is she's careful, she's troubled, she's cumbered about doing things. Martha is a doer. Mary is a listener. But we know from the pages of the Bible, if you listen to the Bible, be ye doers of the words and not hearers only. Mary's not just a hearer. She's a doer. You know that by what Jesus says. We shall not be taken away from it. We know that Mary would have heard the word of God and have been a doer of the word of God. Now Martha is a doer. And I didn't say the word of God. She's a doer. She's in the church doing. But she's not listening. There are people in the church. And they do this. And they do that. And they cut the grass. And they're painting. They're changing the light bulbs. They're dusting. They're cleaning. Whatever they do. They do, do, do. But they don't know the scriptures. They've never witnessed anybody. They haven't done anything with the word of God. That's a Martha. He said, what would be the aspect of that person on judgment day? Well, there's a reward for those that listen. There's a reward, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. For those that hear the word and are doers of it. There are people out there, all they do is hear the Bible, hear the Bible, hear the Bible, hear the, and they don't do nothing. And a lot of them, they hear the modern Bible, they hear the modern Bible, they listen to this phony preacher. And they don't do nothing. That's no good. You got to have a proper diet. I mean, what if you were having a meal and you sit down at that meal like, mm, and they come along and they put an entire plate of Brussels sprouts on your plate. That's it. That's the whole entire meal. Whole entire meal, nothing but broccoli. You know? What if they serve you at the meal a, a bottle of ketchup? That's your meal. So, now, go to John 11. The Gospel of John chapter 11. We're not going to look at the whole chapter, but it's important. John 11. And we're going to look at Martha again, chapter 11, verses 1. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus. In, of Bethany. Okay, that's the place, Bethany. I believe that's the house of things. The town of Mary and her sister Martha. Okay, there they are. There's Martha, there's Mary. Okay, and they have a brother named Lazarus. It was Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment, wiped his seat with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. This is chapter 12, verse 3. So Mary performs a duty for Jesus and Jesus alone, recorded in the scripture. The fact is that we've already read she's in the Word of God. Now she uses her hair, she anoints Jesus. And Christians at the judgment seat of Christ, we're going to hear about your Bible reading, we're going to hear about your Bible study, and we're going to hear about what you do with the Word of God, what you do for Jesus. We're not going to hear what you did for the softball team. We're not going to hear what you did for the bowling team. We're not going to hear what you did for this client. We're not going to hear how many cars you sold. We're going to hear about you... Hearing the word of God and what you 
do for Jesus alone. If it's not for Jesus, there's no reward. Now, I said selling cars. What if you took a car off your lot and you gave it to a Christian so they can get to work, so they can get to church, and, and, and you charge nothing for that car? That will be at the judgment because you did it for Jesus. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. So both Mary and Martha, their brother is sick. And they both together seek Jesus. And you will find somebody that sits at the feet of Jesus, and you will find somebody that's over, they, they got they're more doers, and they come to Jesus. They seek Jesus. They want Jesus. A lot of times these people are involved, you know, the family picnic on Sunday. We, we want to come to G Jesus. We need beautiful weather through our family so we don't go to church and we have a good meal with the whole family. They came to Jesus. Somebody's sick in their family. Okay, Jesus, we need a prayer. That's what a lot of Christians do. The only time they come to Jesus is they have a need. Mary comes to Jesus, sitting at his feet, the Gospel of Luke. Now there's a need for her brother, not her, her brother. Now Martha was cumbered. Martha was careful. Martha was troubled. Martha has a brother who's sick, and she comes to Jesus. So we're going to jump ahead to verse 19. Lazarus died. Verse 19, many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Lazarus died. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, Jesus is on his way, met and met him. All right, so here comes Jesus. Martha gets up and runs. What's Mary doing? Mary sat still in the house. Mary's doing the same thing she was doing in the Gospel of Luke. She's not listening to Jesus. She's sitting still. Now, Martha is cumbered. Martha is troubled. Martha is careful for her. my brother's dead and all the end of the world. We'll see that in a moment. Mary's like, my poor brother, I miss him. Then said Martha to Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. Now, Martha said before, uh, Lord, do you care that I am troubled with, with the work I have that Mary's sitting there not doing nothing? Will you make her come and work? Now, Martha's like, if you would have been here, things would have been great and wonderful. Things were great and wonderful when Jesus was there before and Mary sitting there listening to him and you were cumbered. And life is not going to be great and wonderful. And life is not going to be where, you know, it's trouble free. It's not going to happen. You're going to have problems. You're going to have seasons of, of trial and tribulation and seasons of happiness and joy. Martha now, like she did in the gospel, 
Luke, I mean, Jesus, make her work. She's ordering Jesus. She interrupted Jesus to tell him what to do. Now, Martha, in the Gospel of John, she's blaming Jesus. Well, if you've been here, and Jesus stalled. Jesus didn't get up right away, and he, 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 he stayed. And Martha's like, if you would have got here when we sent people to you, he would not have died. Jesus, if you would tell Mary to get off her butt, get in here and help me. And what's the attitude with, with Mary? She's sitting there listening to Jesus, and she's sitting here relaxed. Martha is still troubled. Things haven't changed. Because she wasn't listening to Jesus. We'll move on. Verse 22, but I know that even now, whatsoever thou will ask of God, God will give it thee. I know God will hear my prayer. And that's your modernistic Christian today. Pray God will hear you. Pray God will bless you. Say this prayer standing on your foot like 400 things on Facebook and God will answer your prayer. So, uh, uh, share this saying, God will bless you this day and the day. Send th three of letters out to your friends and God will be grateful, wonderful to you. Tie 10% of your income and God will give you all the showers of heaven. Give, 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 pray, pray, pray. How wonderful life is going to be. Ah! What's wrong? Well, that is a all religion, but that's a Baptist attitude of your modern Christians that don't listen to Jesus. They won't sit down and hear the message of Jesus. They won't hear Judge not least you be judged, but they won't get verse 2. I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me, but they won't get the chapter. They will not learn to rightly divide, but they will go through the Bible and pick out what they like and get the Brussels sprouts out, get the, the, the lettuce out, get this portion of the scripture. We don't want to hear that. We'll cut it out. We'll add to it. We'll give us a modern Bible with new rendering evil uh, uh, English that we can understand more clearly. That's the modern Bibles. I mean, we don't have time to, to, to listen to the Bible. We got world peace. We got to feed the hungry. We got to go take care of the homeless. We got to go get money for this. We got to build churches. We got to set up missionary camps. We got to do do. We got to do do. We got to do do. And you just got so much do do, your diaper needs to be changed. Listen. You know how a baby learns to say mama, dad, dad? He got to listen to you say mama. It ain't going to be no good to, to feed that kid baby food. What, mama? Get his interest in, on syllables and lip movement and watching you say mama and dada. And thus saith the Lord. Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Resurrection. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection last day. All right, so Martha understands Daniel 12, 12. When all life is past and everybody is dead, we'll all come up out of the ground. That's Martha's. 
Moffin's got some basic, very general, basic, biblical knowledge. But she don't have most. She has no meat of doctrine. <clears throat> she may have cut her teeth, but she don't have many teeth to chew on. And Jesus said unto her, verse 25, talking to Moses, I am the resurrection. There we go. There's an I am. The light. Well, Jesus is going to be going in John 14. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. This is pre-John 14. Martha's getting a revelation that we have not got yet in John 14. Jesus is speaking. And watch. Jesus said, I am the resurrection, the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, he shall live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this? All right, this is Jesus speaking to Martha. Remember, in Luke chapter 10, Jesus is speaking. Martha's not listening. Now watch Martha. Watch Martha. She said, verse 27, she said unto him, Yea, Lord, there's a Lord. I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. I believe you're the Messiah. Okay? Salvation. I know you're the Savior. I know you're my Savior. And they know. They're going to heaven. And that's it. To, de to be a disciple of Jesus takes learning, takes knowledge, wisdom, understanding. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes just sacrifice. She says, I know thou art the Christ. But do you know he's the resurrection? Do you know what happens when you'll die? Martha, Christian, oh, my dogs are going to heaven and my, my kitty cats are going to heaven. You're going to save the whales and all that. That's not the issue. Do you know that the day you die, you'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord? Do you know the event of the rapture is going to happen next? The next great thing in this planet is the rapture. Do you know that the dead in Christ will rise first? How many Christians are going to be frightened when the trump blows and the dead in Christ go first and they don't go? When the Bible specifically says the dead in Christ shall rise first, then those that alive remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. We don't know that time frame from the dead to the living. Unless you listen and study your Bible. And some people right now just heard what I said and they have no idea what I said. And they don't care. Because they got to go do something. You know what doers of the work? Okay, I read my Bible for today. I read my Bible for this year. Good, close the Bible, that's it. And they don't study. I went to church Sunday morning. Okay, that's it. That's it. I put my dollar in the plate. That's it. So, so I know they're out the Christ, the Son of God. Which should come into the world. Well, even the devils profess that and tremble. James records. I met a lot of people. Oh, I know Jesus. Well, so do the devils. All through the gospel, the devils acknowledge Jesus as the Son of God. So the devils are not going to heaven. 
Okay? Verse 28, and when she had said, when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary her sister and saying, the master has come and called for thee. I am the resurrection. I am the life. Yeah, Lord, I know you're the Messiah. Bye. Now, before we go to the next passage, keep your finger in John. It'll be back. Go back over to Luke 10. Luke 10. Verse 42. But one thing is needful that Mary has chosen the good part which shall not be taken away from her. What did, what did Martha say? Martha says nothing. She can't say anything. Now, back in, in John 11, oh, I know you're Messiah. And then she goes and runs and gets married and doesn't say anything. Now look at Mary's attitude. Verse 32. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. The same thing as 1121. The same thing that Martha said. But it's not a blame. She's like, her brother's dead or died. And the only thing it could be is that Jesus, you could have. Because when Jesus therefore saw her weeping, she's not blaming. There was no weeping with Martha. Mary's weeping like, this is it. My brother's gone. Oh, Jesus. And a dedicated Christian in the work could have those moments. Oh, Lord, if you'd just been there. And you don't see it. And there's a lot of times that in the Christian walk, you're going to, oh, the Lord was only here. The Lord had only done something. And down the road, you will see Jesus was there. God was there. And sometimes we... That's why God did that. Now Martha blames Jesus. Mary is upset and crying. Now watch Mar Martha's attitude now. Verse 38. Jesus therefore again groaning in himself come to the grave. And it was a cave and the stone was upon it. Jesus said take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, says unto him, Lord, there's a Lord. By this time he stinketh, for he had been dead four days. I thought you believed he was the Messiah. After Jesus said, I'm the resurrection. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection. Martha, you're going to see something important. That's what he's leading up to. Though he believed, though he believed in me, though he were dead, he shall live. He just told Martha, something's going to happen. And Martha's like, he's dead. You're the Messiah, but he's dead. Martha did not get it. Had Martha been listening to Jesus, she'd be like, what do you mean? What you going to do? Have you ever just sat back with Jesus and said, okay, Lord, I don't understand. But whatever you're going to do, do it 
and help me to see, help me to understand, help me to get a big wow on your ability. Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee that ye that wouldest believe thou shouldst see the glory of God. Didn't, didn't you listen to me, Martha? Didn't you listen to me, Martha? And then Lazarus is resurrected. And you don't hear Martha saying anything, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Now, chapter 12 of John, verse 1. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, who he's raised from the dead. We are told what happened in John, chapter 11. What John, what, what Jesus told Martha, and Martha didn't get it, that her brother was dead, there's a resurrection. Now, the last state of Martha we read about. Verse 2. There they made a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with them. And Mary... And then took Mary a pound of ointment of spink guard, very costly, and knowing the feet of Jesus, wiped his hair. We saw that in chapter 11, with her, wiped his feet with her hair. The last thing we see is Martha still serving. Now Mary is giving back to Jesus. Mary heard Jesus. Mary's upset that her brother has died. Mary saw the miracle of the resurrection of her brother. Now she's seated in the same house, wiping feet of Jesus with her hair, giving to Jesus that costly ointment. We saw Martha in the beginning in her house, She's, sub, she's serving, she's cumbered, she, she's careful, she, she, she's troublesome. Jesus tells her that there's going to be a resurrection of her brother. Oh, yeah, you're the Messiah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jesus, he's dead. What are you, what are you talking about? And there's a resurrection, and we see her back in the same house. She's still serving. She's still cumbered. She's still troublesome. She never got it. And she believed he was the Messiah. Many Jews don't. At the time of the writing. But she didn't get it. She was too busy doing the wrong things. And that's many of you Christians today. They're too busy, too occupied with things of the world rather than of Jesus. And it's sorry that many churches promote it. Many churches do the acting. We're face painting. We're, we're making the, the community happy. We're making people happy. And Jesus said, Marvel not, the world hates you. Know that it hated me before it hated you. Now, there's a right way to be a Christian, and there's a wrong way to be a Christian. And the churches are teaching, well, you know, if you had more love and, you know, you know screaming and Calling, pointing the finger, and, and calling. And, and, okay, yeah, there's a point. I don't believe a, a, I don't believe you should be holding signs and standing outside of abortion clinic where, where to pe preach the gospel. Okay, the abortion clinic is not the gospel unless you're preaching the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. 
I don't believe you should be at a sodomite homosexual parade or if they, and you know, you're a homosexual, you're, blah, 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 I don't think you should be, unless you're going to preach the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Go to my website, go to my street preaching, and you will hear the gospel. And you will hear the gospel. And you will hear about sin. And you will hear about Jesus. You will, be, you will hear about heaven. You will hear about hell. You will hear about believing in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. There's things doing right, Mary. Not the mother of Jesus, Mary. Lazarus' sister. And there are things that are being done wrong, Martha. And from the beginning of the story of Martha to the end of the story of Martha, she never got it. Because she will not sit there and listen to Jesus. And one of the problems that she had is her church, churches today, including the Baptist, you will sit there and you don't hear Jesus. Oh, you may think you hear Jesus, but you ain't hearing the biblical Jesus. That's a shame. We are truly in the Laodicean church age. 